Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today, we're diving into a fascinating question about floating point arithmetic. Our viewer asks, how can I navigate on floats using leaps? Let's break down the question. The total number of floating points is finite, around two to the power of 32. With Java's math next after method, you can make a single leap to the next or previous float. But how do we make multiple leaps at once, and can we optimize this process? Welcome back to another technical video. Today, we'll be going through your questions, answering them, and hopefully finding that solution you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy, just like me, and hopefully you'll find that solution you're looking for. Now, let's continue on to the video. Let's begin by understanding how to navigate between floating point values using leaps. A leap is defined as moving from one floating point value to the next closest one. To move a float to another using multiple leaps, we can create a method called move float. This method takes a float value and an integer representing the number of leaps. However, this implementation is not optimized. We want to achieve the same result in a single addition. To do this, we need to calculate the distance between the current float and the target float in terms of leaps. Next, let's determine how many leaps are between two floats. We can implement a method called getLeaps, which counts the number of leaps needed to reach the destination float. Finally, it's important to note that the term leap is often referred to as ULP, or unit in the last place. This is a standard term in floating point arithmetic. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. When working with floating point numbers, the IEEE 754 model allows us to treat the bits as integers. Adding or subtracting one from a float is like adjusting the integer representation of its bits. If you step n times, you're simply adding or subtracting n to the bit pattern, as long as the sign remains the same and you don't hit nan or infinity. The number of different floats between two floats is the difference of two integers if their signs agree. If the signs differ, some arithmetic is needed due to the sign magnitude representation. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To add and subtract exact values to floats, one user suggests using the iChepli 754 floating point format. They found a method using Java's float to raw int bits function to get the integer representation of float values. They also provided a C++ example that reinterprets float values as integers, allowing for precise calculations of differences between floats. In addition, they shared Java code to calculate the leaps or integer differences between float values, demonstrating how to handle various cases.
Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. The speaker expresses a preference for not altering object implementations directly, suggesting using existing libraries instead. However, they acknowledge that sometimes creativity is necessary. They explain the concept of rounding error, referring to it as a leap. This occurs because floats and doubles are stored in a specific format, which can lead to inaccuracies. Using base 10 as an example, they illustrate that a number like 1.2340 times 10 to the power of 3 has a rounding error of 0 0.1 due to the size of the least significant digit. The speaker concludes by stating that the topic involves complex concepts, hinting at the intricacies of floating point arithmetic. And that's it guys. I hope the video helped find that resolution you were looking for. And you know, if it did, please, I appreciate if you could hit subscribe. Until next time, guys, that you need more technical help, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.